Hey, I've um, welcome to What Do You Think on Tuesday night. We're on the, to my music night, talking to people, other musicians, and things about music. I'm supposed to have Mark Higgins from the band Fat Pigs on, but um, haven't been able to get him on the phone, Messenger. Anyway, so hope you're okay. Hope everything's all good. But Mark, if you do get in while I'm doing this thing, just click the link that you've got to join the stream and join me at any time. Um, so I guess I'll have to add lib a little bit. <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm, uh, as usual, I don't know how many people are going to see this stream. We've had a few hundred watching lately. Hat man, how are you, buddy? Can you hear? Can you hear me? And everything sound all right? Just give me a thumbs up or let me know in that comments, mate. That's working. I guess. I guess say good day to our hat man, Jeff, um, a legendary rock and roll um, roadie from over the years. Jeff's actually going to be working with me on my some of my um, 70s Unplugged shows, which I need to do a little plug for. I have a uh, 70s Unplugged show coming up on April the 13th at the Metropole Hotel in Ipswich. I'm really pumped to be doing it there. Great little pub. We're upstairs in the function room. It's kind of in a, a dinner-style mode. And um, um, it's 20 bucks ticket. You can buy them through the 70s Unplugged Show website. Or if you look through yeah, my Facebook page here and my music page, Tuffy Nick page, you'll see the links to it. Or you can get tickets at the venue. But if you're going to come, let us know. There's limited seating, so I've got to do all that. So um, I got a thumbs up from Hatman. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you. Ah, so anyway... Seems I don't know where Mark Higgins is, what he's up to. As I say, hope everything's okay, mate. We, we were intending to have a uh, an interesting chat tonight about everything that's going on around our local industry, and hopefully we'll still be able to do that. But So I thought, why do I feel the time in at the moment is um, with something that's pretty important to me. I had a rehearsal last night with some people at the old Queensland Museum, and uh, that's because on... Easter, the Thursday before Easter, I'll just pull this up. What date is it? Thursday, 28th of March. I'm going to be playing at the um, the Prince Consort Hotel, which I'm not sure what they call the room there. La La Land, upstairs at the Prince Consort. A little get gathering we do called Rock in Peace, and it's celebrating, we celebrate, the life and times of a good friend, Richie York. <clears throat> Richie passed away back in 2017. But um, I thought tonight I'd just share a little bit of that story about Richie and what's happening on this night. So first of all, the night, we've got a bunch of people playing. You'll see the names of them there doing songs that were relevant to Richie's life and his career and the purpose of peace. And we really... <laughs> We need to be singing that message out really loud at the moment. So anyway, this is Richie later in life. I was fortunate enough to meet Richie in the early 90s when I came back from living in America. And um, a manager I was working with, Greg Shaw, lined up me to do an interview with this guy called Richie York. And we come back from America and we're living underneath my mum and dad's house for a while. And uh, anyway, this guy turns up in a pretty beat up car, um, Hawaiian shirt, shorts on, scruffy hair, and did this interview with me. And from that day, we became very good friends. But this guy who turned up was an absolute legend in the music industry and it took me a little while to understand just how big a legend. Richie's story is that he's probably one of the most influential rock music journalists ever to have lived and worked in our industry. 
He was a Brisbane boy, went to Wavell, grew up in the north side of Brizzy. And um, early on in his life, he got into writing for um, TV Week about the music scene. And he had a radio show. He was doing it at uh, Toowoomba Radio Station. And he was only, Richie was a kid at this time. I, I don't know the actual age, but I imagine 17, 16, 17. He had this radio show. And he, um, he loved American black music, you know, blues music. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to look up Stevie Wonder's first song, Fingertips Part 2. Little Stevie Wonder, he's called back in those days, was sent to the station and Richie got to hear that song and he loved it. He played it on the Toowoomba radio station. And after he played it on his show that day, he got called into the studio and told um, he wasn't allowed to play that N music on that station. Next weekend, when he was doing his show again, Richie set it up where he was able to bar the door on the studio. And he ended up playing the song eight times over, over after each other before they burst in. Obviously, closed his show down and sacked him. But he was a rebel from day one in support of music that he loved. He came, back in Brisbane, he really was uncomfortable around the whole things that were going on with J.B. Ockie Peterson and the tension that was happening in the society here and the, the right-wing angle. He ended up taking himself overseas. Ended up in Canada. And he worked for a, uh, a newspaper in Canada where he actually worked with Neil Young's father. Neil Young's father was a sports editor. And Richie got a job as a music writer for this paper. One thing led to another, and Richie ended up becoming the editor of Rolling Stone in Canada. And during that time, <clears throat> he really played a, a really active role in um, pushing the Canadian Parliament to increase the the percentage of content that Canadian radio had to play of their, of their original Canadian artists. This led to the development of careers like Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, so many artists of that time. And to this day, just not long before Richie passed away, he was um, over in Canada receiving awards and accolades for the role that he played in developing and empowering artists from Canada to become really big stars. While Richie was um, in Canada, a bloke called John Lennon and his wife Yoko happened to be coming through doing a peace tour and it was a bed-in tour where they stayed in their beds in motel rooms talking about peace while journalists would come in and interview them. Richie was one of those journalists that was there. I'm just going to put another photo up here. And you'll see here, it's John and Yoko in the bed. And this journalist down here is Richie writing. And I'm, I can't, I'm not sure if it was Montreal or Vancouver, which one they were at at this point in time. But Richie became good friends with John and Yoko. Yoko. And during this whole time, things became really crazy. John and Yoko just needed to get away for a while. And together with um, Ronnie Hawkins, uh, Richie organised for John and Yoko to have a retreat. I think it was in upstate New York they went to. They took John and Yoko there and, and that began a friendship that took, took Richie's career to the next level. He basically became, with Ronnie Hawkins, a peace envoy for John. He ended up on the, the Chinese border, waving peace signs, getting shot at by, by some guards from over the other side. And he ended up in England, spending a lot of time at Apple Records at a time when the Beatles were falling apart. And he played a significant role in a few things. One was, um, I've forgotten, Alan, the manager of the Beatles at that time. Richie had to go to the meeting and tell him that, he wasn't the manager anymore and, and the Beatles were falling apart. And this Alan guy well, was a, not a nice guy. It was a, Richie talks about it being a very scary meeting he had to have. But he also became pivotal in John 
performing at some festivals in Canada, a particular festival, which really gave John the confidence to move out on his own. Yeah, you know, Richie's, Richie's career flourished. I remember on his retirement, oh, I'll get to that in a while. Along the way, he ended up writing autobiographies for um, Led Zeppelin, official autobiographies. He actually was the first journalist in America, in the States, to predict that Led Zeppelin would become successful. And when they would tour Australia in later years, the only journalist they would do an interview with was Richie York. He, he spoke numerous times about some tapes he had that he, um, he had made recorded with Zeppelin, which are very dark about some of the things that went on. And he always battled between should he release those tapes and he decided not to because he thought it would damage the legacy of what, what they had. And that was the thing, Richie enlightened people by writing about music, but he respected the artist so much that he gained the artist's respect. Even to the point where one of the most difficult artists, apparently, I don't know, but apparently to work with is Van Morrison. And Van got Richie to write his official biography. He was really highly respected by so many people. He ended up, his first wife passed away or was, was, was ill. They came back to, I think they came back together to Australia. And, and Richie ended up being a single dad and the, perm, the senior writer for music for the Courier Mail, I think the Sunday Mail. Either way, he was there for a long time. And Richie was, you know, anyone who in those days would open up the Sunday Mail, the Courier Mail, it would always be stories written by Richie York. And Richie had access to the top artists around the world. When he retired from the Courier Mail, we had a, um, a celebration evening at the old Brisbane City Hall, uh, Brisbane Museum, sorry, Brisbane Museum. And um, there were messages from people like Alice Cooper from y Yoko Sent Flowers. Um, so many artists around the world sent messages and videos. It was an amazing time. And on a personal level, going back to the start of my story, and by the way, just to explain for people or anyone who's looking at the video late, I was supposed to be on tonight talking to Mark Higgins from the uh, the band uh, Fat Pigs. I sent Mark the link. We were ready to go. I haven't been able to get him on the phone or messenger or anything. So I hope everything's okay with him. Um, but Mark, if you're out there and you are hearing this, please just click on the link and join in. And I'll add you into the stream. And we'll talk about what we we're going to talk about. But in light of you not being here, I've had to add lib. So I'm yeah talking about. <laughs> my very, very good friend, Richie York, and his legacy. <clears throat> now, Richie, going back to when I met him, in the first interview I did, we, we basically spoke about, I had just been in Los Angeles recording my first album, Poetry and Beer, and he interviewed me about that and what was happening. And he liked my music. He, he generally liked my music. And I can say that because he didn't just write that one article about it. He wrote a lot of numerous articles for me. He wrote liner notes on my albums. He would turn up to my events and support me. And the amazing thing about that is for an indie artist, indie artist who's um, always battling, you know, you're, you're battling the, press, the mindset of, you know, you're good at what you do, you're performing, you haven't had that right things fall together. So you've always got this big well of doubt in the back of your mind of, am I right in doing what I'm doing and pursuing what I'm doing? And when someone like Richie just offers his support for what you're doing, I mean, this is a guy who was John, he was John Lennon's, John Lennon's publicist. Yeah, he, he hung out with Led Zeppelin, Van Morrison and so many other artists. When he offers support and says what you're doing is worthy, 
it gives you so much confidence. Now, Richie did the same for a lot of artists here. I know Troy Casadale, he supported, I know, Powderfinger. He was a big supporter of Powderfinger. And so many other local artists out of Queensland. I brought an artist, a producer over from China at one stage, Li Jie. And Li Jie, in China, he's a guy who is an artist in his own right, but he was a producer. And he was a bit like a godfather to a lot of their big stars. He really built up a lot of their big stars. By the time I knew him, he was putting out some really interesting music that took contemporary sounds and was blending it with like um, Buddhist, um, Nepalese sort of traditional sounds. And it was, it's beautiful music. And Richie loved it. And he um, introduced, he interviewed Lee Jair and met him. And um, um, yeah, Richie was open-minded to taking in and understanding music from all corners of the world. Another interesting channel, I, I actually spent, well, we spent a number of times, but Richard used to Andy Summers from the band The Police through Richie, a friend of Richie's. Mike had been uh, the guy who pretty much brought the police together. And Andy apparently had later in his life has been doing, was doing a lot of um, photography. And through Richie, I introduced Andy Summers and ended up spending time in Andy. And we end up organising for Andy to be the, um, the feature of the Beijing Arts Festival. Um, it, it was just this link to so many people around the world. And we lost him, 2017. He, that stage of his life, he'd remarried a childhood sweetheart, Minnie. And um, she sustained him through a lot of years in his later life that uh, he maybe wouldn't have made it through without her. And he has this legacy of writings, um, paraphernalia, um, memorabilia, um, yeah, he's got, he's got, he was the last, in, uh, last journalist to interview Jimi Hendrix. Now it was a phone interview, that one. But anyway, they were, they were friends before that. And Jimmy gave him his hat <laughs> and Richie's got Jimmy's hat. Um, just so many things that he has and he wrote about. So on that night, the 28th, which is a Thursday night before Good Friday, we're going to be doing this night, Rock in Peace at La La Land, the Prince Consort Hotel. And we're playing songs from people that Richie was personally involved with and celebrating them, celebrating his life, his legacy, what he did for so many people like myself, just through his pure encouragement. I'm going to be doing, um, with Angie and Harry, I'm doing, we're going to sing Revolution from the Beatles with the band, I believe it's there on the night as well. It's all a bit rough and ready, I've got to say. <laughs> so we're, it's not fine, a fine-tuned show. It's not meant to be because it's just... Richie would love sitting down with you on a guitar in a lounge room as much as he'd love going to a big show. Now, it was all about the essence of music, all about the heart and soul that was put into everything at the beginning. Now, it looks like not having any luck with Mark. Higgins turning up. So hopefully Mark will contact me later. We'll see what's going on there. Next Tuesday, I'm going to be back on with Tuffy, my good mate Tuffy, and we're going to be chatting to a guy called Glenn Bidmead. Now, Glenn's an, a musician in Sydney, had a similar path to Tuffy and myself in many ways, but Glenn used to be up here in Brisbane in the late 80s, and he was an inspiration to me. Tuffy recorded with him, and I know he was a big inspiration to Tuffy as well. And we're going to talk about our journeys along the way. And so Glenn Bibmead, awesome that we're going to catch up with him. Um, Thursday, I'll be back on here again. I haven't gone to talk to you yet. So if you have someone out there, a muso, or someone's just got an opinion they'd like to share or talk about, I'd love to chat on Thursday night with you. So please send me a message and we'll organise for that to happen. But I'm going to keep doing this thing for a while. Just I know it's low technology and rough as guts and everything, but um, uh, you know, it beats sitting watching the telly for goodness sake oh, geez. but oh, I'm going to grab my guitar for a sec let's do a little bit of songwriting chat when Richie was with us I actually wrote a song for him and there was a in that little inner circle a little bit of controversy about it 
Richie was not a religious person. He despised double standards in a lot of the... And I don't mean to be speaking on his behalf here. I'm just saying from our conversations, what, what I experienced. He despised double standards. Um, but at the same time, he was a very spiritual person and certainly believed in something bigger than the sum of just what we are. He loved orchids. He loved flowers. He preferred flowers, he often said, over people. And he was a beautiful soul. And I wrote this little song. It's called Holy Man. And people are a little bit aghast that I was calling Richie a religious person, which that was not the point of Holy Man. What I was getting at was back over the centuries, the holy men in, in societies and communities were the teachers, the people who passed on knowledge, who gave explanations for things that were unknown, who passed on wisdom, often oral wisdom. Richie passed on wisdom about one of the most powerful things in the universe, music. We also wrote about culture. We also wrote about human interactions, about peace, about what we are as a people. And it was powerful what he said. And in that sense, I saw him as a holy man, as someone passing on knowledge, passing on understanding. So I wrote this song called Holy Man. And as you, know, you look through the lyrics of it, and I, I started off talking about him speaking words of gold while the traffic flows. I just always had this little image of him being in one of those big cities sitting on the side of the road, speaking his piece while the world and the traffic's going by. A lot of people wouldn't hear it, but a lot of people did. They would be the ones who'd stop, keep listening to what he said. Um, I talk about him reaching summits, but also laying on the floor. I talk about him being with poets, sitting, sitting at the feet of whores. Now, I'm not talking about whores in the sense of the... Um, um, the justified ones that actually are selling a service. I'm talking about the whores who sell their souls. In that case, a lot of music executives, a lot of big business people, politicians, and the poli a lot of the poets were at the mercy of those whores. I talk about in the song receiving clear water, and fresh air through Richie's words. And that's what that's very personal to me because. It was like a sense of understanding when I'd, he would support low-level artists like myself. It just gave me that sense of freedom that well, he, he didn't have to like anything I did. He didn't have to like anything other local artists did. He didn't just write about everyone. He, was, he chose who he liked to write about. But when he did... That was such a support network underneath your experience. And I'm forever blessed that I was given that support. I'm not gonna play all this song. But if you wanna hear the whole song, I'm gonna do it with, I'm gonna do a three-piece harmony version with Angie Har and Harry. Come along on the 28th. The 28th, we're gonna do a um the Rock in Peace Night at La La Land. It's $20 entry on it. There's Lucky Door Prize. And you'll see there, richieyork.com. Check out Richie's work. Check out what he spoke about for peace, what he's done to help musicians, the artists he's helped. Yeah, Richie's a local legend from Brisbane who played on the big world stage. Holy man sitting by the side of the road Speaks words of gold while the traffic flows Black, white, yellow man on making sound Takes it to his heart and he writes it down The reason I'm doing the whole song is that there's a phasing thing that happens on this setting with StreamYard and I'd have to reset the whole thing up again. So I know it might sound rough and ready at the moment, but that's just the way it's set up. And uh, 
hope you can come along near the whole song properly. Holy man sitting by the bed of peace, touched by the hand of an ancient beast. Your legacy lies upon the pulp of wood, enlightening the people as a holy man should. Hopefully I have Mark Higgins on again some other time. I'm going to wrap it up there. Please come and see the Rock in Peace night. Uh, please, 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 if you're in the Ipswich, South Brisbane, South Brisbane um, like kind of Lockyer Valley, Valley, Lockyer Valley area, please come and check out my show on April the 13th at the uh, Metropole Hotel, my, my 70s Unplugged show. I talk a lot about... Well, I don't talk a lot, but I tell stories about the songs that have influenced my life. There's videos that go with it. It is fun. It's not a documentary. <laughs> and I'd love you to turn up. Once again, 20 bucks a ticket. Um, please come along. Spread the word amongst your friends. And Thursday, I'm going to rock up, hopefully talk to someone. Um, beyond that, I'm um, going to be back here next Tuesday with my good mate Tuffy and Glenn Bidmead, 7 o'clock. What do you think? Check it out. Side so, yeah.